The Go-Giver, a little story about a powerful business idea by Bob Berg and John David Mann. Chapter 2, The Secret The next morning, Joe arrived at the address Brenda had given him and pulled up into the huge circular drive. He couldn't help being impressed as he parked and looked up at the beautiful stone mansion that stretched up a good four stories in front of him. He gave a low whistle. This was some place. The man had clout, all right. Joe had done his homework the night before. An hour on the internet had told him some pretty remarkable things about the person he was about to meet. The man known as the chairman had been a very successful career with a wide range of enterprises. Now mostly retired from his own companies, he devoted most of his time teaching and mentoring others. He was in great demand as a consultant to a Fortune 500 CEOs and as a keynote speaker at Top Shelf Corporate Events. He had become something of a legend. One article had dubbed him the business world's best kept secret. Talk about clout, thought Joe. Leverage, big time. Joe, welcome. A slender man with neatly combed gray, gray black hair, a pale blue shirt, a light gray jacket, and pressed light gray slacks stood outside the great oak door. Early 60s, Joe guessed, maybe even late 50s. The man's age was one detail the internet search had not yielded. His precise net worth was another, but by all accounts, it was stratospheric. The castle that stood before Joe confirmed that impression, as did the man's stately, elegant presence. From his beaming expression, it was clear that his welcome was genuine and not just a figure of speech. Good morning, sir said Joe. Thank you for taking the time to come see me. You're welcome, and thank you for exactly the same reason. Pender smiled broadly over his firm handshake. Joe returned somewhat bewildered smile of his own and wondered, why is he thanking me? Let's head over to the terrace for a hot cup of Rachel's famous coffee, said Joe's host as he ushered him onto a small slate path that led around the side of the mansion. Surprised to be here? Actually, yes, Joe admitted. I'm just wondering how many business legends would open their homes to a perfect stranger on a Saturday morning. Pender nodded as they walked along the path. Actually, successful people do this all the time. Typically, the more successful they are, the more willing they are to share their secrets with others. Joe nodded, trying his best to believe that this could possibly be true. Pender glanced at him, then smiled again. Appearances can be deceiving, Joe. In fact, they nearly always are. They walked for a moment before Pender continued. I was sharing a stage once with Larry King, you know, the radio and television interviewer. Joe nodded. And since he'd interviewed so many famous, successful, and powerful people, I thought I'd check my own observations against his. Larry, I asked, are your guests as genuinely nice as they seem, even the real superstars? He fixed me with a gaze and said, tell you what. The interesting thing is, the bigger they are, the nicer they are. Something about Pender's warm, raspy voice had put Joe curiously at ease from the first moment he heard it. Now he identified that something, it was a storyteller's voice. Pender continued, Well, Larry thought for a moment about what he said, and then he said more. I believe that a person can reach a certain level of success without being particularly special. But to get really, really big, to reach this kind of stratospheric success we're talking about, people need to have something on the inside, something that's genuine. As they arrived at the terrace table, Joe glanced around and just managed not to grasp out loud. Beyond the city stretching below them to the west lay a range of long, rolling mountains, half shrouded in cottony clouds. The view took Joe's breath away. They took their seats and the young woman Pender had called Rachel appeared with a pot of her famous coffee. As she poured cups for both of them, Joe thought, Susan, believe it when I tell her about this place. He he had told his wife only that he was going to meet with a potential client. He smiled as he pictured the expression that would light up her face when she heard about his adventure. Wow, said Joe. Larry King, huh? By the way, this coffee is spectacular. Is Rachel's coffee really famous? It is in this home, Pender said with a smile. I'm not a betting man, but if I were, you know what I bet? Joe shook his head. I bet that one day it will be famous worldwide. 
Rachel is very special. Been with us for about a year now, but I expect she'll be leaving us before long. I've been encouraging her to open up a chain of coffee houses. Her coffee is too good not to share with the world. I can see what you mean. Joe leaned in and adopted his best confidential, just us guys talking manner. If she could reproduce this on an industrial scale, you two could make a killing. He sat back in his chair and took another sip. Pender set his cup now and looked at Joe thoughtfully. Actually, Joe, in the brief time we have this morning, that's where I want to begin. You and I are coming from two different directions when it comes to wealth and creation. If we're going to talk, if we're going to take this walk together, we need to start by facing the same direction. If you notice, what I said was share her coffee. What you said was make a killing. Do you see the difference? Joe wasn't sure if he did or not, but he cleared his throat and said, yes, I think so. Pender smiled. Please don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with making money. Lots of it, in fact. It's just not a goal that will make you successful. Reading the bewilderment on Joe's face, he nodded and put his hands up to signal that he would explain. You want to understand success, yes? Joe nodded. All right, I'm going to share my trade secret with you now. Pender leaned forward a bit and spoke softly. One word, giving. Joe waited for more, but apparently that was it. I beg your pardon? Pender smiled. Giving? Joe repeated. Pender nodded. That's the secret to your success. Your trade secret. Giving? Indeed, said Pender. Ah, said Joe. Well, that's, that's, that's too simple. Even if it were true, which it can't be possible, asked Pender. Is that what you're thinking? Something like that? Joe admitted sheepishly. Pender nodded. Most people have that reaction. In fact, most people just laugh when they hear that the secret to success is giving. He paused. Then again, most people are nowhere near as successful as they wish they were. Joe certainly couldn't argue that point. You see, Pender continued, the majority of people operate with a mindset that says to the fireplace, first give me some heat, then I'll throw on some logs. Or that says to the bank, give me interest on my money, then I'll make a deposit. And of course, it just doesn't work that way. Joe frowned, trying to praise the logic of Pender's examples. You see, you can't go in two different directions at once. Trying to be successful with making money as your goal is like trying to travel a superhighway at 70 miles an hour with your eyes glued to the rearview mirror. He took another thoughtful sip and waited for Joe to process this thought. Joe felt as if his brain were going 70 on the highway in reverse. Okay, he began slowly. So you're saying successful people keep their focus on what they're giving, sharing, whatever. He saw Pender nod, and that's what creates their success? Exactly, cried Pender. Now we're facing the same direction. But wouldn't an awful lot of people take advantage of you? Excellent question. Pender set his cup down and leaned forward. Most of us have grown up seeing the world as a place of limitation rather than a place of inexhaustible treasures, a world of competition rather than one of co-creation. He saw that Joe was puzzled again. Dog eat dog, he explained, as in, oh, sure, we all act polite on the surface, but let's face it, it's really every man for himself. That's about that about sums it up. Joe admitted that it did sum it up indeed. That's certainly what he believed anyway. Well, said Pender, it's simply not true. He noted Joe's skeptical look and continued. Have you ever heard people say, you can't always get what you want? Joe grinned. You mean the Rolling Stones? Pender smiled. Actually, I imagine people were saying that well before Mick Jagger's time. But yes, that's the general idea. You're not going to tell me that that's not true, are you? That we actually do get what we want? No, said Pender, that one is true. In life, you often don't get what you want, but he leaned forward again and his voice grew softer with emphasis. Here's what you do get. You get what you expect. Joe frowned again, trying to mentally test out the truth of this last thought. Pender leaned back and sipped his coffee, watching Joe. After a moment's silence, he continued, or put it another way. What you focus on is what you get. 
You've heard the expression, go looking for trouble, and that's what'll find you. Jill nodded. It's true. And not only about trouble, it's true about everything. Go looking for conflict, and you'll find it. Go looking for people to take advantage of you, and they generally will. See, the world as a dog-eat-dog place, and you'll always find a bigger dog looking at you as if you're his next meal. Go looking for the best in people, and you'll be amazed at how much talent, ingenuity, empathy, and goodwill you'll find. Ultimately, the world treats you more or less the way you expect to be treated. Pender paused for a moment to let Joe absorb that thought, then added one more. In fact, Joe, you'd be amazed at just how much you have to do with what happens to you. Joe drew a a breath, so he spoke his next thought slowly, thinking it through out loud. You're saying people don't take advantage of you because you don't expect them to? That because you don't put any focus on selfishness and greed, even when it's all around you, it doesn't have much impact on you? Then he had a flash of inspiration. Like a healthy immune system, the disease is all around you, but you don't catch it. Pender's eyes sparkled. Wonderful. That's an exquisite way of putting it. He kept talking as he scribbled in a little notebook he had produced from inside his jacket. I have to remember that. You mind if I use that as a bit of brilliance? No, go ahead, Joe gestured grandly. Take my brilliance. I'm full of it. He paused, then added. Least that's what my wife always says. Pender burst out laughing as he sipped his little notebook back into his unseen pocket. He put both hands on his knees and looked directly at the younger man. Joe, I like to do something with you. I like to show you what I call my five laws of stratospheric success. If you can make a little time, say every day for a week. Seriously, Joe nearly stuttered. For a week? I, I don't know how much time I could take off. Pender waved his hand vaguely, as if to say, time means nothing, not a problem. All we need is an hour a day. Your lunch hour, you do take time for lunch every day. Joe nodded, dumbfounded. The man was going to meet with him every day for a week and hand over the details of his most valuable trade secret. First thought, Pender continued, first you'll need to agree to my conditions. Joe's heart sank. The conditions, he had forgotten all about that. It was only after he agreed to Pender's conditions, Brenda had said that they would set up further meetings. Joe gulped. I really don't have the means. Pender held up his hands. Please don't worry. It's nothing like that. So Joe began. Do I need to sign an NDA or this brought a big booming laugh from Pender? No, no, no non-disclosure agreements. If anything, the opposite. I call these five laws my trade secret. Not because I don't want people to find them, but for exactly the opposite reason. I call them my trade secret so that people will find them, so they'll seek them, so they'll place the proper value on them, because it's really a term of honor. Excuse me? Joe was lost. Pinda smiled. The world itself, secret, originally it meant something treasured, something sifted, weighed, and set apart for its special value. Actually, if I had my way, everyone would know these five laws. In fact, he added, that's exactly why I have put these conditions in place. Actually, it's just one condition. Are you ready? Joe nodded. I need you to agree that you will test every law I show you by actually trying it out. Not by thinking about it, not by talking about it, but by applying it in your life. Joe started to give his assent. But Pender stopped him and continued, and that's not all. You must apply each law right away, the same day you first learn it. Joe looked at Pender to see if he was kidding. Seriously? Before I go to sleep that night, or I'll turn into a pumpkin? Pender's face relaxed with a grin. No, you have a point. You won't turn into a pumpkin, but if you don't abide by my condition, our meetings will come to an end. But Joe stammered, not to sound impertinent. How would you know? Another excellent question. How would I know? Pender nodded thoughtfully. I wouldn't, but you would. It's the honor system. If you don't find a way to apply each law I show you the very same day you learn it, I'll trust that the next morning you'll call Brenda to cancel the rest of our appointments. He looked at Joe. I have to know you're taking this seriously, but here's what's far more important. You have to know you're taking this seriously. 
Joe nodded slowly. I think I understand. You want to make sure I'm not wasting your time. Fair enough? Pender smiled. Joe, no offense, but you don't have that power. Joe looked confused. I mean the power to waste my time. Only I can do that. And truthfully, it's a vice I gave up a long time ago. The reason for my condition is that I don't want to see you wasting your time. Joe looked down and saw Pender's outstretched hand. He took it and gave it a firm handshake. He felt a thrill go through him, as if he had just embarked on an adventure worthy of Indiana Jones and mirrored the chairman's broad smile with one of his own. You've got a deal.